the sister continued. Now, listen to what happened to the four Vipastyas. Vipastya was a king who, when his kingdom was defeated, he cut off his own head and turned into four Vipastyas, who were very powerful beings. So let's see what happened to them after they'd conquered the world. One of them was killed by an elephant. The second was taken away by some celestials. They were yakshas, who dropped him into blazing fire and he perished. The third one was taken up to heaven by the celestials known as Vijadara. There, that Vipastya did not bow to the king, King Indra, who cursed him and reduced him to ashes. The fourth was killed by a crocodile. Remaining in their subtle bodies, these four saw their own previous history in their own minds, where they had created subtle impressions. In the space of their own consciousness, they saw the whole universe with all its oceans and mountains, towns and cities, the sun and the moon, the stars and the clouds. They even saw their own bodies as before. It's like in a dream. When you're in a dream, you have a body, don't you? Do you need to have a body? Who knows? The fact is, you have a body. Endowed with the subtle bodies, these are the Ativahika bodies, they saw in the space before them their own physical bodies. So in your dream, you still have your inner life, don't you? Your dream body becomes as your real body, and you have the same relationship in your dream body as you do to your physical body. So in your dream body, you still feel that you might have this subtle body, you've still got this inner body, and your dream body is just like your physical body, so you carry the same relationship into your dreams. On account of their past life impressions or memories, they saw themselves as being clothed in physical bodies in order to witness the magnitude of the world. In order to see the actual extent of the earth, they roamed other realms. And this is the nature of what Vipastya was doing. There's a hunger for experience. This is the nature of consciousness. It wants to experience. And this is what we've been getting in the story of Vipastya. So even after they die, it carries on. Consciousness still wants to experience. So it carries on. The Western Vipastya crossed seven continents and seven seas and had the good fortune to meet Lord Vishnu. From him Vipastit received the highest wisdom and remained immersed in Samadhi for five years. After that he abandoned the physical body and attained Nirvana. This is what eventually happens to consciousness. The desire for experience eventually, for whatever reason, begins to weaken and then consciousness starts to turn towards itself and realize its own nature and this is expressed here in the meeting with Lord Vishnu who then helps Vipastya to consolidate his realization. The oriental Vipastya remained close to the rays of the moon and contemplated the moon constantly hence he attained the realm of the moon. This thing about contemplation is very powerful. This is the form that much meditation takes, contemplation, contemplating a form. Here it's contemplating the moon, or it could be even contemplating the teachings of self-inquiry. So it takes on its own kind of reality. The southern Vipastya destroyed all his enemies, and even now he rules the country because he did not lose his memory or his convictions. The northern Vipastya was eaten by a crocodile, in whose body he lived for a thousand and one years. When that crocodile died, he emerged from its body as another crocodile. I suppose he didn't have much choice but to contemplate being a crocodile. Then he crossed oceans and ice packs of unimaginable distance and reached the lake of the gods known as Suvarna. There he died. Because he died in that realm of the gods, this Vipastya became a god, even as a piece of wood lying in the midst of coals of fire instantly becomes fire. 
This last vipastrit reached the boundaries of the earth plain known as the Loka Loka Mountains, which he remembered from his past birth experiences. These mountains mark the end of the world. They mark the edge of the world. These mountains are several thousand miles in height. One of its sides is illumined, whereas the other is not. From there he saw the earth, etc., as if they were distant stars. One wonders if they could even be an asteroid belt. The asteroid belt. Then he went to that side of these mountains, which was forever shrouded in darkness. Beyond that is the great void in which there is no earth, no beings, and nothing mobile or immobile. In it, even the potentiality of creation does not exist. So he's looking out into deep, empty space. An abyss of nothingness.